All right, and we're back. Fun topic today as well. One that I know that we both have a lot of thoughts on and one that we've seen a lot of people use as a way to level up their own skill set, level up their careers, unlock opportunities. That's side projects. So many cool thoughts on side projects, a lot of examples to share today. I want to start it out though by talking about why are side projects valuable? Why should somebody even think about a side project and consider pursuing one if they're not already doing it? Yeah, I, I think there's there's two two reasons. One, side projects can be a great way to open up new professional opportunities for yourself. Um, and then second, it's a it's a great professional development framework. Like if there's a particular skill or an area of interest that you're curious about, like actually building something tangible um, is a great way to actually explore that interest as opposed to one, doing nothing about it um, <laughs> or, you know, just like taking a more passive, I'm going to consume content about this type of approach. Yeah. So whether these fall under your two or they're just a, a list of my, my own other reasons why I think they're valuable. I, I'm reminded of a story where I was, I, I met this recent college grad. This is a, a few years ago, but this still sticks out to me. Um, met this recent college grad in a conversation um, asking for career advice. And I, or, or no, no, I think senior in college, this, this is, that's a key, key detail. Anyway, asking for career advice, what can I do? Um, you know, what can I do to, to start setting myself up? I'm going to be on the job market soon. And I was like, well, do you have any idea what you want to do? And this individual responded and said, I want to be a writer. And I was like, okay, great. Well, what, what have you written? And the response was, well, I've written a few term papers. And I was like, well, <laughs> I hate to break it to you. That's your problem. Like that's going to be a, an issue. It's being a writer is something that I think is probably a really popular in demand, more supply than there is demand. And if that's not something you're doing for yourself, is there, do you even know if that's something you enjoy first? But second, like you're, you're going to be, um, the burden of proof to prove that you're a writer is going to be on you. And if you're trying to pitch somebody that you should get, they should hire you as a writer, like you're going to have to show them something. And I, I just, I don't, laugh at that. Don't story. show them the term paper. I, <laughs> I laugh at that story because I think that I'm not going to, I'm not just going to point fingers at college, but I think the education mindset often thinks that like you can study things in the abstract and the, this theoretical, and right. that's good enough. The best preparation for it. Yeah. Yeah. And so in our world today, like our world today, that's leaning more and more towards technology where everything that you can put anything that you do online, even if it's like a, a hands-on trade thing, like you can shoot videos, you can write blog posts. There's literally endless, infinite ways that you can use a side project to enhance your signal and proficiency. And that's probably my main point. And there are other ones. Yeah. And there, you know, the, the thing about that particular story, I think there's, there's a handful of specific areas uh, like writing, coding, uh, you know, graphic design, etc. Where it's like, if you're not if you're not pursuing those that type of work on your own already, then that's that's such a weak signal that you would even be good at at that type of work. Um, like I think more than others. Like those are very cool skills that like, if you're interested in writing, you write. If you're, if you're interested in coding, there's a strong chance that you've, you've taken steps to learn how to code on your own. Um, and I, I think that applies across the board to some degree, but there, I think there's specific professions where that, that applies more than most. Yeah. And I, I think it's important too to draw a distinction between a portfolio and your side projects. And and here's here's some other here's some other reasons 
that I think are important or valuable aspects of side projects. One, I love to ask people what they do for fun when, when I'm interviewing them. Like, what do you do on Sundays? And, or whatever variation of that question. And try and get a sense of like, what are you actually interested in? And, and can this opportunity help you scratch that itch some? Because I want you to have some fun and enjoy what you're doing a little bit. Or I want this to be directionally towards the thing you're going after. And, and that, that I think is a, a good litmus test for somebody who is pursuing their craft and their career. But also like, it can't all just be, when it's all just like work related stuff, I think it's really easy to carry over that assignment based mindset to things where you're, you're completing for the grade or you're doing something because someone else told you to versus this curiosity driven learning process that just, I, I think it's very difficult to match the types of discoveries and aha moments you have on your own when you're doing something because you're lost in it. And it's something that just truly makes you come alive. You're interested in, like, I think I've, I've personally taught myself more things by pursuing things that I was really interested in, whether it was a side project or like taking a project way farther than it needed to go spending ungodly amounts of time like your research for fantasy football like my yeah like fantasy football i've i've taught myself more awesome excel and google sheets tricks through fantasy football than i than i learned in my career but (laughs) there there are some other other things too this is one i've experienced my for myself in you know like doing a newsletter and i'm going to take this line from a great blog post by dave gerhardt that's titled how I, a side project helped jumpstart my, jumpstart my career and why you should have one too. And here's this awesome story about how he was, he was still early in his career working for Constant Contact. He wanted to like start to expand his network, start to develop some skills. I think it's just, he, he just started working for a new tech companies in Boston. And he had this idea of like starting a podcast as a way to get to know other people in the industry to expand his network and to like develop skills. So he went on and did this and like looking back now, it's awesome to say, wow, what a success story. That side project led him on to un- unimaginable success. But some of the points he has at the end on w- the value of side projects, my, my favorite one is number five. And he says, you are the CEO. Like when you're doing a side project, it's fundamentally different than when you're an employee and you have ownership over a particular task, you ha- you're you responsible for all of it. It's fundamentally different than being a student as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And and I, I know from my own experience, like doing a newsletter or, you know, going deep, like going, writing a ton of posts on Quora or whatever, like you don't get to turn around and ask somebody else how you should handle this. Like there's no boss that's responsible for what you create or how you solve a problem or whatever. And that, that's a tough thing to do. That's a learning experience where you have to, you have to call the shots. You have to figure out how to respond to things. You have to come up with things. If that project is going to get any farther along, it's on you. Nobody else is doing it. And I think that's a really valuable thing to learn how to do projects on your own. Um, You know, that's definitely career upside from that too. Yeah. I mean, Think about all the different things that strong side projects signal to whether it's employers or people that you want to work with in some capacity. Um, one, actually, some of my favorite side projects are have nothing to do with like, hey, I would love this, like how it relates to the type of work you could do in a full-time role. But it's just an example of, wow, this person is like an intellectually curious person. Um, yeah. Best yeah. example of that is our friend, Chuck Grimmett. Like pretty much, Beat me to the punch. he probably does like five side projects a week. Um, we could do an entire podcast series on his side projects. But, you know, my favorite is his, uh, is his long running Cook Like Chuck blog. And he takes cooking as a hobby to like the next level and just someone that's passionate about something 
Like that makes me excited to build a relationship with that person or to work with that person potentially. It's, it's like you read my mind because my last point was going to be side projects make you more interesting. I think there's like such an embedded popular social cultural narrative that you are like for college students and college grads, you are your major. And then like that transitions into you are your your job. job. And, and like, once you've exhausted, you know, what do you do for work? Where did you go to college? Um, How's the weather and like sports, like really shallow level topics. Like, where do you go for conversation if you're not interested? Well, you know, like it's, it's small talk. You're not really getting to know someone really well by talking about sports or the weather or, you know, like maybe what team they care about and how much, how interested in sports they are. But we're going to put that to the side as a side project. There are ways you could probably transform that into side projects. I can, I can think of a couple even, but like going back to Chuck Grimmett, he wanted to learn data visualization a few years ago. And so he took all of Steph Curry's shot, shot charts, like yep. shot mappings from uh, like several years worth of data and like put together this heat map, awesome side project, taught him a very valuable skill. I love that one too. Um, shout out Chuck, probably 400 other examples we can, we could go we'll through. We'll just call this the Chuck episode. The Chuck episode. Uh, shout out to Chuck. But it is, it is funny though. I think when you meet somebody who's, who's interested in a lot of things outside, like you don't have to try very hard to find a hot button, like something that just really excites them. And when you, when you hit that button, it's, it's funny. I I love that in interviews too, or even when you're just meeting somebody for the first time, like there's that aha moment where somebody shifts into, I'm talking about the thing that excites me. So makes you more interesting. All right. Some of the, one of the other angles on this, I, I'm, I think, cool to talk about not just like best side projects you've seen but you know if you got those rattle those off but best stories of people parlaying those into a job opportunity or or a career opportunity yeah i'm gonna let you let you lead this one yeah so first one that comes to mind is lauren holiday she's she's an awesome marketer full stack marketer is, is the title. And she's got a great blog post. We'll share in the notes here too, but she got this awesome blog post called how I went from underemployed waitress to top 1% of millennials in six months, where she details this process of I'm out of college. I moved back home to live with my parents and I knew I didn't want to be a waitress. So I set my sights on this specific skill set and came up with a very actionable plan on like steps I could take to get a little bit better and get some experience Mm -hmm. and like ended up becoming she's she's an awesome marketer i follow her content and she always has great things to say very skilled but like deliberately spent her time outside of her her day job to create that opportunity for herself and in the actual like project work she did correct me if i'm wrong what like she she pitched herself to do free work for for businesses, I think so. Yeah, for small businesses like yeah. digital marketing, work. learn digital marketing skills and to build a you know a portfolio for herself, so she could take that and and go win awesome job opportunities. Yep. So that's a big one. Um, another one I want to share is a guy named Pedro Matos. I spoke to a while back. He was talking about how he was really interested in getting a promotion at his job and like. I wanted to prove myself um, that I was capable of taking the next step. And so as a side project, he went, he wanted to, to get a promotion in business development. That was the, the department or whatever. So as a side project, went and started doing cold outbound prospecting to build a list of business development leaders that he told him he had a podcast and went out and just recorded a ton of interviews as a way to get more familiar with the space to kind of, you know, learn from professionals and also build this awesome ca- bank of content that he could use and turn into a podcast um, you know, directly for, for his business, but also as an awesome side project way to advance his career. 
that was a cool one. Free learning. And then last one, last one is a, a really cool one that I only recently learned this story, but it's called, it's about these links. If you don't, if you're not familiar with these links, these links is a daily newsletter with some of the best, uh, best links to best articles around the web on a daily basis. Um, Delia Kai started this, started uh, these links just as a newsletter, fun project on the side. She was an intern, um, a couple years out of college. She's working at Atlantic Media and newsletters were starting to be a big thing right there. And she was like, wait, this sounds fun. I'm already reading and learning about all this stuff on a daily basis. And I think this would be a fun project. And now it's a paid newsletter. It's profitable. And in three or four years, it has grown over to like 2000 subscribers who are paying for this daily newsletter short. And it's an awesome newsletter. And that's that. I love that. I love that one too. I, yeah, that's a really cool one. I love like just the project description. It just sounds like a fun thing to do personally. And I don't want to underestimate because I'm sure it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work yeah. to have to be able to, to deliver something on a daily cadence. Um, and you got to find the right link, like the right links to, to be sharing. But you also... Like if you approach it the right way, that's just like a really fun project to do for for the sake of it. And I think that's a really cool one. I mean, actually all three of these are examples of this, but I think doing doing side projects, it's such a huge advantage to do when you're just starting your career because, you know, compared to most young professionals that have, you know, zero to two years of experience, you don't have a lot of information to go off of like, hey, is this person going to be able to, to add value to my business? And signaling that you're, you're the type of person who would you know, take initiative on your own accord to, to do a project like any of the above, that's, that's huge. Like usually, you know, I have education status and minimal work experience to go off of of a candidate entry level. And that's just an easy way to stand out from, from the talent pool. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be anything professional either. Like right. there, there are really easy ways to manufacture a really strong signal when you don't have a ton of experience. And, and I like to, like, there are so many tools for people younger today too, that are digital natives. Like if you told me, like if you accidentally had a million TikTok followers and like five posts, that's one thing. But if you, you told me your story was, I posted one video every day for 60 days and I grew my following to a million followers or whatever it was that, that like, it wouldn't have to be a huge number to be impressive. Yep. Yep. It's, it's the consistency or, or the, de, like the deliberate effort yep. that I think is really valuable. And I, that could go for anything. It could be, you know, Instagram followers. It could be blog posts. There's literally countless options here. Yeah. And, and going back to, you know, Dave Gerhardt's point of like, you get to be the CEO of something that that's a huge signal. Like if you're able to execute a, a solid project on your own, I'm going to be way more confident in your ability to own you know, more significant responsibilities in an actual, you know, job. Um, one, one different type of project, side project that, that I want to point out and the person probably didn't even really consider this as a side project. Maybe he did, but um, Nick Runlet, Praxis grad, he's been, he's been running a weekly sales mastermind. Oh, that's a great one. For Praxis community for multiple years now. And he recently landed an awesome uh, head of sales job at, at a startup like two, two, three months ago. And I guarantee you, he, he brought up the fact that he's been running that mastermind for so long. And like, I know if, like if he would have brought it up to me as a hiring manager, like I would have dug into that. I would have been really excited about that. You know, he'd be able to talk about, Hey, yeah. here's how I recruited people. Here's, here are the things that, you know, we 
from a content perspective, we focus on here are the skills that I developed as a sales leader by running that. Like someone, and and this is interesting in sales because we know probably the best sales managers or VP of sales are usually not like number one sales rep. Um, it's a different skill set, and and someone that has sales experience, like all right, that's one one box to check off. Um, but someone, if you can, before you're in a position of leadership on a sales team, if you can exhibit leadership that you you've kind of created for yourself by something like that, that's really cool. And and I think it's also a cool example of like, all right, not all side projects have to be like you have to create something tangible to show the world. Like yeah. that's a, that's a weekly meetup that he ran. It's really cool. Yeah. And I, I think that's another good point too, is these don't have to be things you're already an expert in or things that you're already like proficient in yeah. that, that does help. This, like a great side project is documenting your learning. Yeah like whatever it is, you want to go learn a new skill or you like uh, uh, another one I've seen in the past is I'm trying to remember who I, who I saw this several years ago. It was like every book, every book I, I read, I went and wrote a book review and then put them on their website. And I was like, that's an awesome project. Like everybody says they read books, but you took it to the the next level. And now there's like this digital trail of the things you read and how you responded to them and the thought process. And it doesn't even matter what that says. The fact that you did it awesome and valuable. So if you're going to start a side project, let's start there. We'll wrap it up with that. Where should you start? I'm going to dive in. I'll yeah. dive in. You just think about it. So I think you have to choose. You have to choose what, what you want to accomplish. And 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 like cut yourself some slack. This doesn't have to be the most intense, complex inversion. Like it could be as is something is something as easy as I want to teach myself something, or mm-hmm. I want to write, or go deep and explore a topic and talk about yeah. it. Yeah, like whatever it is, just start. Like, all right, there's something you want to learn. Yeah, start start with your curiosity first. Yep, um, and then instead of framing it as like. Hey, what's a course I can take or, or whatnot? Like what's a project I can do that would force me to develop these skills or to gain this type of knowledge? I'm going to, I'm going to use a Gary Vaynerchuk quote. Um, learn from people that whose stuff you don't like, but this is a great one that he does. He says, document, don't create. Like a lot of people spend so much time thinking about getting it perfect you know, like I got to create this thing before I put it out in the real world. But I, I love the idea of document, don't create. Like if you want to go learn something, literally go start by going and writing a bunch of posts, like notes on a topic yeah, and publish those, then turn them into blog posts, whatever it is, like start lowest, with your curiosity. And lowest barrier to entry. Like yeah. if, if you don't have like a very clear project idea that you're like super amped up about, start, start with the smallest possible thing that you can do like today and then yep. do it again tomorrow. Yep. And then second point and final point here I've got is Isaac Morehouse advice. What's one thing you can do every day to move this thing forward? Yeah. So that's it. More questions, comments, thoughts, side project ideas, send them our way. Mitchell at Discover Praxis, Cameron at Discover Praxis.